So the stream can hear us? Yes, can. Okay. All right. What? We have to tell them they're ready. Okay. All right. So <laughs> a little bit of chaos getting the stream set up, but we're just about there. So I guess we should introduce ourselves. This is not a normal, uh, our normal setup. So who are you? The volume's a little high, Christian. Is it? Oh. <laughs> I am Garrett, a.k.a. Dirty Wolf 22 I am an Overwatch player for the S.H.I.E.L.D. team. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm Chris uh, Chororo on the Overwatch S.H.I.E.L.D. team. I play support. He plays DPS. And today we are covering the uh, actually the Beacon game versus EKU, which should be an interesting match, no? I'm, I'm excited for this one. I'm excited. Um, uh, so they're coming just off a win today. So they just went up against I SIUC, which is a clean 3-0. It was very fun to watch. Unfortunately, we couldn't stream it. There were some issues with scheduling, and we couldn't get that done. But we're here for this one. Exciting. True. I know. We got to watch a little bit of the, the previous game from Valpo Beacon, and uh, we got some great Bastion gameplay. So I'm just... <laughs> I'm, I'm rearing to see what our, what our picks <laughs> Dude, are. Dude, I'm excited. So, <laughs> speaking of picks, looks like we got them. Kind of a classic comp coming from uh, Valpo. You know, you got little flaps on the Rhine. Our resident Rhine player kind of <laughs> very comfortable in the role. And then we got the Symmetra coming out of spawn. Should be, uh, they're going to go fast here. That's the main, that's the name of the game here. Going fast. All right, starting sort of the fight. I mean, obviously you're going to see the Rhines dueling it out, trying to beat each other up, trying to get some extra folk damage. It looks like both teams are running a pretty similar comp here. Valpo switched off the Symmetra out of spawn to go to the Reaper. That's a little mercy pick. Yeah, huge pick. You do lose the cast, but it looks like we're bi Valpo's big up in this fight, and the Rhine already has Shatter. That's crazy fast. Yeah. The game's pretty loud in our ears. We're trying to get that figured out. <laughs> uh, big shout out to our production team. Love this guy. He's actually doing great. It's, it was kind of scrambled to get this set up. But going into this next fight, we're seeing a lot of ult charge from Valpo, and EKO is just not quite keeping up on it. Big shatter from Little Flaps. Huge. And that's the kind of play you expect to see from Little Flaps. I won't lie. If I've seen one person get the craziest shatters, the most greedy and aggressive play, I mean, that's how you play Ryan. Greasy Overwatch. <laughs> Greasy. <laughs> and, of, <laughs> and of course, we see Scoot out here with the Bastion play. You know, I, I predicted it. And so, yeah. I, feel like this is a good sign. I think it is. It's always good a sign to see Scoot come out on the Bastion. The Ditto Kitsune ults, it's actually a better spot here for EKU because they're going into the other Kitsune. It's a little more aggressive for them, but the raw pressure. Well, I was going to say the raw pressure from the Ryan swinging in the Kitsune ult, but he did die. EKU, EKU could pull this out, but the, the Bastion plays. He's holding left click. <laughs> He's holding left click on him. Oh, nice. Oh, wait. Big ult here. Good, At good least. Pressure. Yeah, zoned it out. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. Oh, well, Ryan's back. I doubt he'll be able to swing it out this time, but. Yeah. It's going to be pretty hard uh, for him to win this. Yeah. I think this is going to require a swap from Malpo. I agree. I think that the Arisa swap was really good for them. Yeah, it solved a few of the main issues they were fighting. I would like to see, well, I see we've got Scoot lining up off the Bastion. Mm -hmm. A sad sight to see. <laughs> <laughs> but onto the Soldier, setting up for a, a little flank here. Actually, it looks like they're all going for a flank. A little sneaky. It's a little risky, I think. They've got a, a Pharah with ult and the Arisa with ult. 
And I expect to see both of them this fight. Because you know Valpo's going to run in there. And if they get met with these ults, it might not go the way they plan it. Fight Reaper setting up for a big ult. Ooh, catches the cat. Ooh, gets a little two. Getting the Kiriko is really big. They catch... Ooh. I don't know. That's tough. Ryan had Shatter and died. Honestly, I'm surprised the Reaper picked up two. It was a little bit of a predictable left shift in. Yeah. Pick Q. But, um, I mean, you know, if it fits, it ships, as we that's true. say. It's kind of hard. They're going in so fast, but it seems like they might not really have a plan. That's kind of what I'm picking up. The play seems a little uncoordinated. Mm -hmm. Things are just happening one by one. And I'd like to see them go in. It looks like now they might have a plan. They got Nano. They got Shatter. They're probably going to go with like an aggressive Rhine play. Nano the Rhine. Runs in, shatters. That's what I'm hoping to see at the very least. That's huge. That's big. That's big. Big Shatter from the Rhine. Stops the castle. They're running in. There's the Nano. He's cleaving through. Everyone on their team. No. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's hard to stop. <laughs> it's it's hard to stop a Rhine in the Kiriko ult with the Nano, just swinging on your team. Taking first point. This is good. That's good. Score. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, we're having a little bit of trouble just, with stream. You know, gamers, we're just hanging out. I hope Wait. everybody's having a great day. I do too. Wish Chris a happy birthday in the chat. It's not my birthday. It's closer, it's closer, to, closer to yours. Stay close to me. It's close enough. <laughs> you know, wish my boy Chris a happy birthday. Yeah, you know, big you know, big birthday boy. It's approaching finals year. week, you know. Give him, give him a word of encouragement for this CS major. <laughs> I am a CS major. That was nice. That was good remembering. That's big. All right. <laughs> Going into the next fight. We're seeing, again, similar comps. Uh, low Flap switching off to the Orisa, which is kind of exciting. I think that this is really big for us. Yeah. We didn't make any swaps that I think were required the last round, so... Whiffs the Javelin. Hate to see it. I think... <laughs> Another one. Hits that one. That's big. So, what's going to be hard here, and what we're kind of seeing, it's going to be so hard for them to get, like, a good pick because of that Mercy. With Mercy's new changes and increased healing to like people who are low, just shooting the Arisa I don't think is going to be enough. I think they have to focus out targets a lot better. So... <laughs> So what I'm kind of looking for here is a bit more focus. I think everyone's just shooting forward, you know? And I think that's going to be a big issue in... Yeah, yeah, shooting forward. I mean, it's not a bad strategy in most cases, but with the Mercy flying around, it's going to be hard to catch with just, like, looking directly forward at the tank. Yeah. That's a big cleanse for our team there. Completely stopped the Arisa ult with that cleanse. Huge play from Atlas. Yeah. But then again, it was very good, but we're still seeing like no picks. Nothing's happening for our team. And the other team's taking advantage just a lot. You know, just kind of stuffing with the Arisa. And she's taking all the hits, and then the DPS is just. I think it's I think it's fantastic. Well, it's not. I think um, the mercy on the DPS in the back end is kind of what they're struggling with here. I'd love to see some kind of flank or some kind of person playing an off angle to maybe put some pressure on that back line. But as we see here, they're kind of just running for. They're kind of doing like a rush type with this Arisa, and it's not really working. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. There's no... This is huge. Really big potential. He's going to take a lot of damage, though. Yeah. But we're just losing our supports left and right. 
really nice play by UK. Honestly, yeah, EKU was... They played that really spectacularly, in my opinion. They kind of, I think last round, they identified what the issue with Valpo is right now and like their lack of focus. And so they can just play this really super powerful backline with, uh, yeah, uh, without like much punishment. So even I'd like to see if they want to run this like rush, I think they should commit, which it looks like they're about to do. You know, we've got the Rhine coming out, we've got the May. They got Sim, they probably won't stick Sim. But even if they did, that would be really strong. Right. And then, of course, you got the classic backline, you know, Kiriko, Ana, really high heal potential, and a lot of potential for, like, oh, still dishing out a lot of utility. I think, unironically, this comp works, because now we're seeing that hit scan for the Mercy. Mm -hmm. So, as long as our line is playing a safe front line with that Arisa, Spinny, spinny. Yeah. Anti projectile. I agree. I think um, a really big part of this, though, is going to be how the May plays. This map can be very, very strong for May if you play your walls correctly. Right. But if those walls aren't placed so you can like zone one person out, there isn't a lot of value in it. You're still just going to get you know out pressured in the front line. All of Mercy's value is going to come here down the section. See? That was big, it was a little was hard to spot. But now they're on is getting punished. I feel yep. like they play so split, and so they can't get a lot of value from each other. This is very good though, this is what I like to see. I think unfortunately, yeah, little flash so dies. Low. That's the thing, it's just like, I like to see they were, you know, brawling it out on point. They had the May walls, but they just can't secure anything, any like good kills. And they just get out sustained. So they either need to play this like differently, like you know, play something that's more flanky or more along like the back lines, mm -hmm. or they just need to switch it up entirely. Right. That may is gonna help them close distance, especially if they're not sure that they're doing that, so. either choosing to use Ooh. wall to pressure. That was so unfortunate. The little flap shatter got canceled by uh, the javelin. And so he couldn't stop the visor or the Kiriko ult push. Really clean javelin. It was a very good javelin. This is gonna be tough. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be hard. I like this. Yeah. I feel like maybe Valpo is going into this a little too confident, not confidently, but a little cocky because they're the last game. Mm. I think this is a wake up call that they need to you know, focus it up and run it down. Right, I think they're too used to their safe picks. I think they need to get a little creative here. Yeah. I like this swap. I like the swap to Ram here. I think the Ram works, and I think what Bull Labs is finding out right now is that their back lane is weak when they pressure them, however. Exactly. Brawling, I don't think, is going to benefit them here in this situation. No. See? I think that's what we were talking about. They kind of ignored the Arisa, and then Bull Flaps just ran into their back line while everyone else was focusing. I think that's what they need to do. I mean, obviously, it's what they need to do. It worked. <laughs> You're right about that one, Chris. Love Thank to you. hear it. It's good little wall off the back line. Yeah. The team wasn't exactly there to help mm. out, but I think that the idea was right. So Valpo's lost two in this fight already, but it looks like they're still trying to aggress really hard here. It can be dangerous with that Mercy pumping out so much healing. Oh, Low flaps wow. pops old. That's kind of dangerous when you've got so few people with you. You don't have much support in that fight. You need to be pretty sure that this ult's going to get value. It looks like it is. It did quite a bit for their team. It held back their team. This might delay them. Yeah. This might delay enough for, like, our team to come back. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Little Flap's getting a little stuck on his uh, his own maze ice block. No way. That's so unfortunate. I think Valpo recognizes what needs to happen and what they need to be doing. They're just, I think, having trouble executing it. Oh. Yeah. Nice little play there. That was good. EKU bringing it home for the round. I like this. I like when games are close. I know. I do too. 
you know, I know we're from Valpo and stuff, but, you know, this is where it gets entertaining. Yes, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Big play from Little Pops. This is a big shatter. Nice. Yeah, just that hyper aggression. It just debilitates their back line. That's how you can tell he's Masters instead of, like, Silver or Gold because he doesn't charge in as soon as he slams. Yeah. Which is, you know, it's a big difference maker for damage output, DPS, as far as Ryan players go. So, you know, Ryan players out there, <laughs> make sure to hit E. <laughs> make sure to hit E. Mm. I think um, what's going to be really important going forward for Valpo and for, like, their performance overall in the is just, like, adapting better. Like yeah. you had said earlier, they've not really been switching it up, like, mid-game. Mm-hmm. Like, they, you know, they switched to Arissa for second, but then they just played Arissa on second the entire time, and they stuck Ryan, and, and the DPS are swapping around a little bit, but what do, what do you think they need to be, like, picking? What do you, what's your recommendation, I guess? <sighs> well, okay. They've got a, um, Kipper is a really good Mercy insta-lock, and I mean, don't blame them for it, because oh, it's true. working, so oh, they're, good. they're playing corners tight. But I also notice situations where their positioning is kind of off. So I feel like something with hit scan would really punish them. Like, I want to see Scoot on some Widow here. Or, like, I want to see him on more 76. Or, like, even an Ash would work really nice. I think that the junk pick was kind of wild. I mean, it is a close quarters map. But I don't think that it benefited the play style at the point. Mm. Um, but, yeah. I think... I think... They also need to be calling out targets because it uh, feels like the damage is really spread out over the team. And while that does make the healer's job harder for healing everybody to full, it doesn't make it harder keeping people alive. So I think that they need to be talking right now about focusing down targets, realizing who is causing problems. I know Little Flaps is probably calling out Motherly Duck right now, saying they need to focus him. And I know that um atlas and scoot are most likely calling out kipper their mercy player because they've just been popping so many heals um i didn't get a chance to see the scoreboard but i can imagine kipper probably had a lot of damage boost and a lot of healing yeah. that round i agree i i agree exactly with what you're saying that they need to just it, it feels like everyone's playing individually and no one's really playing for each other mm. And what I'm, what I like to see, I'm a support player. I'd like to see if they're gonna commit to this like Rhine rush, and they mm. want to get in there and they want to be hyper aggressive. I'd love to see like a Lucio. Yeah. Maybe instead of the Kiriko. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel like the Ana is getting value, but I think from a Lucio and having that like hyper aggression and that coordination, because everyone's just running in except for like maybe another backliner you can get like a lot more value if you had like a reaper and the reaper's just popping shots in the other healer that isn't mercy and then you have a maybe like a dps that's on the off angle shooting mm -hmm. at the mercy and any backliners that are left and then ryan's just swinging i think that could get just a lot more value a, a lot more value <laughs> sorry uh just overall mm -hmm. and i'm hoping to see that but i don't know how much how comfortable these support players are with lucio and i think that's a big a big topic uh, is just like how well, like how big your hero pool is, because mm -hmm. that really does affect like what you can be good at in like a you know team play scenario. Yeah, I like what you mentioned. I think even if they wanted to like force something without his hit scan, focusing down on um, their mercy player, it's it's really gonna, you know. If I was setting it up, if I was my, if I was IGL, I was the little gamer, you know, in mm. team, I'd be like, you know what? Okay. Ryan, Lucio, Reaper, 76, Kiriko. Okay. Walk. Just walk. <laughs> just, just walk. Go. <laughs> you know, I agree. Because, like, that will disrupt their back line mm. so heavenly, it feels. It feels like any time that Lil Flaps, like, got into the back line when he was playing Ram, everyone just scattered. Yeah, and that makes the team so much easier to deal with because you can just section off people. Even like not going Ryan and going a safer option, going Arissa, I think 
hitting E and just walking through Arissa, pushing her out of the way with E, and then moving straight to the back line, having your Reaper there is going to be your little spear to the shield. It's going to yeah. be a really clean fight when they're in the back line fighting squishies, while um, if your whole team can, you know, can stay on top of you, you're in the middle of everybody. So you can separate healing. Healing is focused on uh, DPS and other supports now rather than on the tank. So backline could fix up on the tank or could fix up on the support, which, you know, preferably in a fighting scenario like that, really, really brawly uh, walk, probably looking at any kind of backline hit scan and not necessarily focusing down uh, Mercy Pocket, which it looks like we're not even going to get right here. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, so... You know, obviously we got a King's Row, the classic, mm -hmm. Scrim's Row. Kind of exciting. It's a big favorite of Shield. We love playing King's Row. Mm -hmm. uh, but very interesting comps coming out here. Usually we see a Ryan or Ram on King's. Well, okay, I guess we are getting one with Motherly Duck. Motherly Duck. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this goes because they've uh, EKU has switched up their strategy quite a bit. And we love to see a Widow off rip. Taking first contact here, Scoot. Taking peeksies, no, uh, no windows off rip. So yeah. Oh, Ooh, nice little, Ooh, nice little almost tap gets there. Bit. You know, kind of scares them. Mm -hmm. I think a really thing, a really strong thing about Widow on this map is that it just locks off so many angles because you're scared. True. Our Widow's gonna have to play really careful there because as soon as they potentially rotate through building, which is I'm assuming they might do after they notice Widow. Um, Looks like if they're not, they're just going in. If not, I guess Widow could have a field day here. Really big opportunity. Nice, good kill on the run. Nice little tap. Forces a whole reset. If we could get picks here, then that sets them back even further. But it looks yep. like we're going to take the safe route. Um, I do not blame them. Looks like Widow repositioned. I can imagine they might have gotten pressured by backside. Yeah, I'd imagine the Junk just throw lobbing grenades up there. Yeah. Oh, nice little setback okay. there. Have to play really careful here. Just being alive on 5 HP, nice little heals there, is better than being dead. So, exactly. Even if you're not contributing to the fight directly, just being alive, having numbers right. is enough. Yeah, this Widow from this Widow play from Scoot is so aggressive and so, like, oppressive to the enemy team that they're just sitting in corners. They don't really know where to move. Agreed. Oh, big wall off for the Rhine. If they can just batter this Rhine this whole time. They're separated right now. That's yeah. huge. Nice little here go pick there. Very big. Both supports for EKU gone. Scoot with a nice little headshot. Oh, Scoot getting picked back by Sombra. Oh, this is going to be interesting. This is big. I feel like that might have come out a little late. Hmm. Like, I don't know how much use they got out of that. And the thing is, too, I think they're going to instantly swap. Yeah, we see that the, uh, the Reaper's coming out now because of the Sombra play. I like that. I like that pick. Agreed. I like the Reaper playing around corners here and stuff like that. Um, I kind of wish we had a McCree, but at the same time, Reaper does work into this. Yes. Wall came out a little bit late, so... I'm seeing a big ult come out from nice uh, little, little Flaps with the Nana. Holy E going Oh, wow. In. Breaking big up their anti. window. Pushing past their window is really strong here. Oh. Ooh. Gun down a little bit. They managed to recover. Yeah. that M weren't. It's hard. A play like that, you need everyone kind of in sync. If you're going to run forward on that Orisa, everyone has to be like aware of that and know when to push with you and when to hold back. Like right there, I think they should have pushed with them because he made so much space from right. that window, from the apple. I think if they push up with them, they really could have secured that fight. But now they're on the, you know, on the heel. Yeah. This setup's going to be interesting because yeah. usually I watch teams either get rolled here on this corner or they hold forever. So we'll see yeah. what happens with Valpo and EKU here. I'm hoping just to see like a wall, you know, like just a, an iron wall from Valpo. That's really hard to push past for EKU. This is going to be really interesting because our main should make a difference here. It should, especially with this big freeze coming up. Oh, wall comes out a little early. Unfortunately dies. Though they could still clean this up. Reaper's sitting in their back line. He doesn't have ult, so he's kind of just back there poking at people. Bumpo's he's out, a lot of out. Poke. Arissa's really vulnerable right now. Yeah, but they just can't make use of it. They have so much... Too much heals. So much healing and so much damage from the back line that Lil Flaps just dies first. 
Yeah, Reaper most likely should have been looking for a E out there, but I think mm -hmm. that's just unfortunate timing. He was last. It's hard to hard to make up. What? No. Oh, I think we just got a you button spam. You hate to see it. Wow. Oh, it's so unfortunate because that's such a big ult here. It's so strong, especially oh right goodness. at this corner. Well, hopefully we can see Valpo kind of recover. We've got. It looks like they might be going for a Blossom plus a uh, Rissol, but they don't no make touch. it to points. Oh. Oh, and they still blossom? I don't know. That seems kind of dangerous. I think the safe bet here is just to not yeah. use and just. I think so. Just back up. Don't use. Back up. Just like, oh, okay. Really big we'll see how this here. turns out. Oh, oh no. perfectly timed. Suzu. Yeah, it, it's so hard. You have to wait for that Suzu to be up. Because now that's three ults, three ults that Valpo has spent that have gotten no value. Unfortunately. Wow. And now. Um, EKU is most likely about to have four ults for the final mm -hmm. contest here. And it's going to be point. It's going to be tough. Mm. We do have Kitsune and uh, Nano coming out, and we switched to Zarya for tank. What do you think about really that? Uh, I'm... In this meta, I'm not really sure how the Zarya works, but I'm going to respect um, Yeah, we respect see EKU kind of just spamming all their ults here, which is a really valid strategy because it's hard to fight oh, the locked in just, a corner there <laughs> the Arisa is just stuffing student in the corner but not killing him crazy wow. sustain there Kept from the up. kiriko looks like uh valpo isn't really looking at supports right now which is yeah kind of they really need to be looking for the supports oh nice little Ooh, wall there big wall in the Arisa. it's still so hard to kill kiriko climbs the wall still finds heals for Arisa. yeah big nano coming out for the uh for the zarya we get a lot of value here. The EKU, Kiriko cleanses the Suzu. Or cleanses the uh, anti. Jeez. Yeah, you're good, you're good. Ooh. Nice little pop. There. We have to keep on the card. Only 0.56 meters. No shields left. Both oh. supports down. 0.56 ah. meters left. Ah, and that's a take. Two minutes and eight seconds. That's actually not bad at all. That's not bad, especially with how second went. Mm -hmm. And all those ults that really just got no value. Yeah. But... Still, that is kind of, that's, that's still a pretty decent time bank for EKU. I think honestly, this was just like it went from timing and situational to now it's kind of a snowball yeah. where they ended up with more ults when they needed them rather than Valpo who didn't have their ults when they needed them. Hmm. And I honestly just want to forget about watching the <laughs> the Q's <laughs> fam. <laughs> yeah, it's so sad, man. It's, it's okay, though, because okay. I've also done oh, that during a comp it. game. We've all done it. Yeah. yeah. You're too excited. You're pressing W, A, and D over and over again, trying to dodge bullets, and you just slam the Q button. You know, you hit the little, and then you put your hand back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, like, scratch your shoulder, and you're like, dang, yeah. you put your hands back down, ah, slam the no! Q. No! Oh, it's so unlucky. Just one more Wow, that was kind of impressive. First try, the Winston jump, switching into Ryan to go on top Wish of the Wish my tank could do that. <laughs> Had the little moves in spawn. True. That'd okay, be nuts. Okay, okay. Okay, what I'd like to see here, we're getting the Widow Mercy. Mm. And Scoob was kind of doing a lot of work on Widow. He was doing a little. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So we got the the shield coming out for the Widow. A little tap. hiding. Widow call out, yeah. I don't think there's anything to do but hide when you have a widow that oppressive looking at you. Nice little reposition there. Yeah, oh, like little Ooh, aggressive. Little too much, but he could still salvage this. You know, taking pot shots at the Orisa. Ryan is pushing up super far. They're taking an incredibly aggressive play here, which I love to see. Ooh, might be a difficult position for the widow to maintain here. Oh, Mercy finding a little. That was nice. Struggling oh. position there. So little we lose Kiriko on the front line, so he can't support the. Uh, the Widow. Unfortunately, dies. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to see that, that Kiriko so get slammed, but it didn't really... <laughs> it didn't happen. That's okay. I'll make it worth Honestly, it after that Kiriko pick that EKU got on Valpo, um, mm -hmm. it should have been an instant retreat. Instant retreat. Yeah, but, well, they uh, res the Kiriko, so I think they were still trying to play that, like, aggressive angle. That's fair. But that's going to be hard for them to maintain. Like that snowball effect. I think yeah, exactly. Is. I like to see the Sojourn coming out here from Valpo. Scoot is kind of like a known, really aggressive, really accurate Sojourn player. 
And so I love to see it here. As you can see, he's taking this super aggressive angle, fighting the soldier. Oh, he doesn't oh. take it. No way. No, this slam <laughs> got cleansed by EKU. Oh my gosh. It's so unfortunate. EKU's really hit their stride here. You can tell they're like, they're predicting they're like, Valpo a lot. Bing, bing, yeah. bing, bing, bing. Exactly. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah, I'm talking with my hands. Um, and EKU is kind of, you know, stonewalling Valpo. They, they can't move That's forward. Every time they do, they get like one good pickoff and it's, it's over. See, now what I want to happen is I want D.Va to dive top right with 76 and Soldier or Boom. Sojourn. Boom, okay. Exactly what you're talking about. Find the little push here. This should be easy pick This right should now. be an easy pick on the bat. Oh, come on. Someone's got to find him. They did get Immort off, but. Yeah. Well, now you see a kind of interesting scenario. The, the map has flipped. They're mm -hmm. defending first, and now EKU's attacking. Which this is really a beneficial big window. They for should just Valpo hide. right now. They should just play sightlines here and hide from that uh, soldier in window. I don't uh, know how much they need to be, be finding do. those support picks. Yeah. I oh, want to see he's a gonna big pop it. I don't know if he can. Ah, yeah, you don't yeah, do it. <laughs> come on. I'm, I'm glad he saved. I'm glad he saved. I know, me too. It's so dangerous. If Arissa had E, that would have just been. It would have been. It would have been tragic. Yeah. We see little flaps backing up pretty, pretty far. Will he make it out? Nope. Oh, this is such a bad reset for Valpo. It's Valpera. very unfortunate. He needs to just go in and, and die on point. Yeah. He won't make it out and he won't get it fast enough. They have yeah. one good fight and a couple of ults coming up. A couple of very, you know, game-changing ults. But they're going to be up against a Kitsune and a High Noon. Mm. I'd love to see a Kitsune Reaper ult here. Yeah. You know, some, some hyper aggressive. You get Immort out. You get uh, Arissa spin out, and then you just go in for it. You know, damage no boost it. Yeah. You know. And you just. Oh wait. He's not setting up for that though. He's going right now. Oh. Okay. He cut. He got two. He gets. No. He gets the bat. Well, he <laughs> got the Immort in bat. Hey, the Immort suit. Wait. Big. Oh, nice little picks here. there. Oh. Huge picks. I little bomb there. Okay. Ah! Uh, wow! Really I don't unfortunate think he reset bombed. there. I don't think bomb was the play there, because you leave yourself so open. No touch. And now they just don't make it. Dang! Good map from EKU. Really good play from EKU here. They play some mean defense. Their defense is strong. It's. Mm. And I think, you know, we kind of fell to the same thing as on Nepal. Valpo can definitely take this the same way I think EKU can, but Valpo needs to um, change mental ah. a little bit, I think is what needs to go on. You think it's a mental thing? I think it's mental because right now it's getting snowballed. I mean, we won first map, so that means that there's a testament to skill right? that I think can be contested. Uh, but I think they're worried about the wrong things. And it's causing them to be slightly more predictable than they should be. Hmm. I, I think that's... I think I agree. I think EKU has a really, really good read on Valpo right now. And yeah. Valpo just needs to switch it up. Mm -hmm. I, I like what you were saying with like the mental and the gameplay. The ult conservation from EKU is also really good right now. It is. Tonight, they're using their ults really effectively, and it just, it's finding. I think Valpo needs to do something similar, and they need to start um, communicating their ults a little bit better. Like, if Ryan's going to slam, and you've got great positioning, you've, you're you against, you know, all the, all the squishies, like, you don't need nano. You're going to get three picks, and then the fight's going to be yours. You don't need nano, so communicating things like that. Right. So we can save Nano for next fight, or you know, and then start that snowball. Valpo needs to snowball for them to take this home. Right. I agree. I think um, there's another big thing that we haven't really touched on, which is like the positioning of Valpo. But you kind of mentioned it right there, like you had great positioning. Mm -hmm. I think uh, specifically the supports are kind of playing a little too open, mm. and they get found a lot. Yeah. Which I mean, it's detrimental to go into a team fight with no, with like down to support or down mm -hmm. two supports, you know, God forbid. So 
I kind of like what I'm seeing here. I like Havana for Valpo. I like Havana. We saw Scoot mm -hmm. on the Widow, which I mean, this is a classic Widow it's game player. And I think what we'll probably see out of Little Flaps is like a Sigma, or maybe mm -hmm. even, dare I say, Dive. Which I mean, if we're talking switch ups, we get we get little flips on that little flaps on that doom. That'd be crazy. Ready for battle. There we go. <laughs> uh, but no, actually we see Rye. That's kind of that kind of surprises me. That is pretty interesting. And I mean, it's not invalid on this map. We are playing brawl on defense here on Havana, which if it was any other map, I'd be a little worried. But this is a good map to camp spawn a little bit. So <laughs> that's true. That might be what they're going for. Yeah. But what I'm kind of, I'm disappointed, not by a plan. gameplay sense, but by an entertainment oh, sense. Oh, got a little, we are paused. We got a little pause here. Yeah. You know what? Something's going on. Considering... Well, I guess we can talk about this a little more in depth then. Yeah. Um. Oh, I see. We we did the wrong time on the map. Oh, okay, cool. But We're it seems like no one really... No one really cares. Yeah. Um. So from an entertainment standpoint, I'm sad we don't have a widow. I wanted yeah. to see a widow. I know. I think we'll get it on attack. I don't think we're gonna get it on defense here. I think on defense, Hanzo is a better pick than Widow because you peak fire, peak back, and then reposition a lot easier. But with Widow, it's kind of like you set up, you take your shot, you set up again, you take your shot. So I feel like. <clears throat> In a Widow v. Hanzo situation, unless your Widow is absolutely cracked, then I think Hanzo takes that just there, over buddy. time. Over time value. So. Wait. Oh, a bit of a stalemate. Oh. Coming out right side, it seems like they knew. Probably heard them stomping around out there. But now Someone's it's just. Little toesies giving them off. Oh my. So, right there. What I saw is exact. What I saw from EKU is what I wanted to see from Balbo. Mm -hmm. That May wall, and then just everyone oh, focusing the one yeah. target who couldn't escape. Mm -hmm. And so now they have to be on the, they have to be on their heels because they lost their tank. They can't like fight up in close. And so all they can do now is poke. Did Valpo get their wall off? I didn't see they that. They did. They did. But it wasn't as effective because the, the wall from EKU blocked uh, Valpo's sideline, so they couldn't mm -hmm. pressure. See, I think that's a speed thing. If yeah, I think so too. I think if Valpo is gonna camp the front entrance, then they are gonna have to make the first move. As soon as yeah. they walk out, boom, wall, split the team in half, at least make them think a little bit more to reposition. Because wow. now that they're on monkey, it, it's not gonna happen. The main yeah. swap needs to happen. Uh, Reaper, I think, is good here. Reaper can stay for sure. The BAP is gonna be kinda hard for the monkey. <clears throat> I think Mercy can work for sure. Oh, for sure. I think... Okay, so we've seen uh, Lil Flaps play a little bit of Mystery Heroes. He was on Ryan, switched to Sigma. Now he's on Orisa. Yo, Ryan, I saw your... They saw the hammer they through the saw wall. Them. No That's way. so unfortunate. Uh, you have to think about those things, though. Uh, so with EKU already taking first, they definitely had the ult advantage because their May popped ult really in the second big fight. Hmm. But right now, Valpo has a lot going for them. I yeah, wonder if Valpo is calling that Ash up top there, because May could have easily rotated up there and taken that fight yeah. on it. Now, now it looks like a confrontation is going to happen. Yeah. Mercy and May get jumped, picked off. And something, I mean, we talked about uh, ult con conservation, but mm -hmm. I think what we should really be saying is ult rotation. Because right there from Valpo, no ults happened. Yeah. And they just got stamp, they got like uh, stampeded by a nanoed monkey. Yeah. Which was a big ult, and they only needed to use one to win that fight. But if we saw like a freeze come out from the May, it could have been different. And I think we're gonna see the freeze coming up real soon. Maybe not. I almost back. hope not. But not there. Yeah. But see what I mean? We popped out uh, from Atlas. Atlas popped out which is good, but then everyone got antsy. Mm -hmm. And then all it took was one, it was Brig rallied and then Monkey ulted, and then they were just, it was done, it was over. And now they're getting momentum so hard. They've had freeze for 
a couple of fights now, haven't used it. They've had freeze, they haven't used it once, and now the opponent may has now used freeze twice. And so I just like to see a little bit more, not aggression, but like just a little more consideration Pressure. of your ults. Yeah. Because Bap has an ulted either. We're swapping heroes and we're losing the ult charge from that. We swapped off Reaper. See, like this is this is I think where mental comes in because why is Reaper not better than Junkier? Yeah, I mean it could be just how you're feeling on any given day, but yeah, sure. Okay, we finally see the freeze coming out, and this is a really good time to use it. Oh, hopefully Valvo can make something of this. Monkey gets trapped. Nice. Just jumping wow. in, random Very trap. Very well placed trap. Really well done. We see Atlas pick up a few kills, which is always fun to see as a support mm. play. The carry kill, you know, throwing the kunai. <gasps> Bing, bing, bing. Love to see it. And so now we finally got Valpo in like a advantageous position. Mm -hmm. Where they've got this sort of semi high ground. They have to walk through this long main. The monkey gets nanoed. Oh, that's a big anti. We really want to see a big cleanse there, but the, uh, the monkey bubble kind of messes it up. I, a result's coming out here. No, it isn't. See, that bubble break was the difference between your entire team living and dying. Because exactly. that Suzu, I mean, our Kiriko knew that she can't throw Suzu through walls, so... Oh, of course. If if the whole team looked at Monkey Shield, then it, it would have been a clean wrap. I agree. But I think that's the issue. Big kill on Ana here. Ooh, Huge nice play from re Scoot. Reposition there, he yeah. now has Tired. This could really turn this fight around. We've swapped to a Bastion. Which, honestly, that's a good pick here for Valpo. They're it's having trouble with the monkey, and it'll burn. just burn him. Mm -hmm. and, and the shields, yeah. See, this is also what I'm saying. They killed the Ana, EKU backed off entirely. Mm -hmm. That's what Valpo hasn't Valpo been doing. Needs to do. yeah. It's what they need to do, and they just need to focus out that Ana more. Because it mm -hmm. totally got the team like off their back. I feel like we're gonna see a tire coming out here very soon. And also knowing when to pressure. When you get that pick, it's like right. everybody's gears should turn on and they should start moving. Ooh, that's a really unfortunate time to tire. <laughs> Just totally negated by the Maypreeze. I wow. don't know about that ult either. I know it's kind of like last ditch effort, but actually I don't know if they get a touch here. I don't think Valpo oh, touches. No swaps. Oh, especially not with that. Oh, I think they need a tracer swap. Yeah, I agree. That would have been a touch. Oh, the Lucio almost wow. made it. Yeah, I agree. They should swap Tracer there. That's hard. That's that's unfortunate. That was rough. I think the Bastion switch was smart, mm -hmm. but not in time, you know? Yeah. I also think Bastion was playing a little bit in the open. If they could be playing around corners a little bit better, or at least mm -hmm. sectioning off angles so that they only right. take, had to take one fight at a time rather than fighting the whole team at the same time. Right. I think that's a really common mistake on third point here on defense is it feels really open, but it's just really hard to just find that angle, that sweet spot. I agree. Yeah, I'm kind of curious uh, what Valpo's going to run on attack here. That monkey was super, super oppressive. I do like what I see there on Scoot's icon. Mm. You know about that. Okay, we've got mm. D.Va. All right. That's interesting. I feel like I don't Check see much D.Va play. Oh, Okay. A ball. <laughs> I think he's just hot swapping between yeah, I characters. Yeah, I think he's just jumping around. <laughs> uh, I'd be very interested to see a ball here. Though. I'd love to see Little Flaps play ball. That'd be funny. That'd be awesome. <laughs> and what do we see from it's EKU? We've got kind of a similar team to what Valpo was running at first. Mm -hmm. And I've got the May. Now this is the Lucio Kiriko. This isn't quite the most rush-based comp, but that's kind of what I wanted to see Three, earlier two. on. <laughs> and they got, and they got <laughs> little uh, visual glitch. EKU hiding all on the right side. I have no idea how this is gonna go. All right, so they're all staying perfectly still. They are. They are not moving an inch. So if this doesn't work for EKU, then that is going it's to be gonna be really rough. bad. So it I don't know why Widow is rotating room. in here. I actually like it for now. Oh, nice little tap there. Oh, oh, no full charge. But as soon as he gets pushed, it's over. Nice little heals. Getting run down, though. It's hard, I think, to play Val to play Widow there. I don't think it was a bad play. 
I think it was okay, like, taking the off angle, but as soon as they use grapple there to grab heals rather than just leave, mm -hmm. then um, I think that that was kind of the death, the death sentence. Yeah. It was an interesting play from EKU to see him hide on that right side, but it worked out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So we see Lil Flap still on the D.Va, which is interesting to me because I feel like a lot of the people on EKU's team just negate a lot of D.Va's value. Right. But he might make something of it. Big wall off on the Orisa. Ooh. They could get a kill here. And they just don't find it. Oh. Hmm. Diving back on the Lucio. Ooh, this is a really tough situation to be in right yeah, now. Yeah, especially with that mail coming out. That was a yeah. big cleanse to get most they people out of that ult. Oh. It, well, Barely I feel like that was actually good. It forced uh, EKU to pop <laughs> 4K. Her That's huge. Yeah, maybe not then. 5k. <laughs> nice little spin. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I gotta... <laughs> I mean, a 5k is crazy. That is fun. That is crazy. Hey, the payload stopped. I All don't right. know how Valpo is going to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Considering what we've been seeing and what characters, you know, they've been playing. I mean, we're gonna see a bomb come out, but I don't know how much value it's gonna get because... This team is very reactive. We got Lucio beat off. <laughs> no Lucio beat. This might be a huge bomb. Kiriko definitely oh! dies. Okay. Wait, that's big. They have two. No. Oh, no! oh my gosh. No. No, way. that's so unfortunate. Literally could have walked this. three feet to the right to the behind corner. Oh, wait, we throw freeze? Very interesting. interesting. Walled off. Everybody walks out. Um, if they want to fight this, Reaper will ult in. But yes. Well, the other team is super backing risky. off. Yeah. You have to wait. So they Kitsune. I would go in as Reaper now. I'm not going to lie. As Reaper, I would have set up top there down main. Yeah, And then I, I would have dropped down this and ulted with my team's call. Nice. Wait, really big ult here from... Nice find on Kiriko. From Sky Kirby. Big Ooh. Reaper ult. Okay. 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 Okay, Valpo. See, that's what I like to see. Mm. That's a good... I mean, they're down on ults right now. Yeah. Uh... And definitely, EKU has the ult advantage. This is, I think, where momentum starts. We need to poke until we have ult advantage, yes. or at least something to counter. Because as soon as we get that train rolling... Yeah, it's it's so much easier. Mm. I think you're right. Valpo needs to be focusing a little more on just like, getting some really good poke in here. Which See, this is gonna be feels hard. like too much pressure. Yeah. I think they need to be playing under. There's no reason for them to be contesting up here. Well, I think they should be trying to obtain the high ground. Like, I don't deny oh, that that's that like freeze. a good idea. That freeze was really big for EKU. Yeah. See, I don't... Like we were mentioning, I don't think that there is enough focus on Pope because yeah. that wouldn't have been a problem. And if May was caught walking up to the entire team while we were just poking, then May would have been an obvious target. Even if, like, you know, our Valpo didn't assume that she had ult, then... You still see her walking up, though. Yeah, and, you can, like, and it's like, at least if she's, on, like, off sides or out of position, then right. at least take a pick. Big Kitsune here, they can get a big lot Kitsune. of aggression on the side crown. Unfortunately, Little Flaps <laughs> Little does Flaps get falls. knocked off. <laughs> really big wall, you know, blocking out the uh, Bob from getting a lot of ground, but... You should hop up on Kari here to get a little you bit should. of angle. Or walk back, that's fine too. Yeah, get back to high ground if you can. Right now their team is split up, so what is Lil Flaps going to do about this? It looks like he's going to focus on the back lane. He might pop ult here, which could get an insane Popping amount of value. Not be bad. I think he should do it. Too long. He's, yeah. It's, and now the team just has like no pressure. Yeah. I know he was probably a little afraid to pop ult because he didn't want to die instantly when he popped, but I think that that was probably the moment. I think he should have popped it early. Yeah. Like, as soon as he yeah. got it, I think, you know, popping that ult, you get a lot more pressure on them. You make them split up because they're trying to run away from you. I think as soon as Lucio popped that um, beat, waiting a couple seconds for health to tick off, and then popping, because Ram just absolutely destroys on point fights. Yeah. So. Really big cleanse there from Atlas. Really he cleanse the ult. And now we're seeing the Ramble come out. Unfortunately, Valpo just immediately loses two, three Ooh. people now. And it's going to be hard for them to take any more aggression. 
you can do is just finding those picks. Yeah. Somebody's found offsides, and you know, mink. Yep, it's, that's it. And it just you know ruins the fight. You have no momentum anymore mm -hmm. once you get a support gone or a DPS gone. And like that was really, that was a lot of pressure that EKU yeah. was applying on Valpo. Like even there wouldn't have been a bad time to take a fight. Ooh, like this, really big. Yes. That's huge from Valpo Clean up, right now. clean up, clean up. Just cleaning up the rest of these people. They do lose too. Little Fox does get taken out. Oh, I can't find this Lucio. Please. They got him. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's just two. It's a, it's a Rissa in May, but they have to get to point 10 seconds. I don't know if they can make it to point. I don't especially if they, they need to be. Wait, they got ball. Oh, they touch point. Okay, they, they got overtime at the very least. Yep. But they have to, they have to take these people out in the main. Really big kill on Arissa. But they cannot burn leave bomb, point. Burn bomb. They need to burn Bob here, yes. Okay. Really good damage. Nice little burn there. We got the ball rolling up to high ground. I think ball is actually going to be a good pick. It'll split up their back line, mm. which Valpos have been having a lot of trouble with, even rolling if it was just slam. a pick for touching point. Mm. I think that the Tracer swap actually works as well. I agree. Tracer needs to be really careful of what the fight it takes, though. Cause yeah, because that break that May, will... The break, break and, the May. and May. Yeah. Big slam. But he immediately just catches every cooldown on the team. Oh my god. Good coins to get the ball out. Nice little rotation there, forcing the mate. He's in. already generated a, an incredible amount of ult, but they lose Kiriko. I don't know if. No, they need a touch point! Oh, oh my it's gosh. Just fall out there. 1v5. And he doesn't. He can't make it. Uh, Alright. GG's EKU. GG's EKU. Good Honestly, tries, Valpo. It was, it was a good, it was a good set. True. I think. Uh, oh, big play here from the Orisa. Top 500 challenger. Nice. That Lucio ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, this uh, this Orisa was really, really strong. True. Motherly Duck played a played a really good tank. And this little 5k spin. Yeah. A little spin. Um, I mean, it was, it was good games all around. True. I think Valpo played... Wow, they're gone. <laughs> I think Valpo <laughs> played well. But they had some issues that EKU just really knew how to exploit. I hope Beacon watches this VOD back. I I'll see you all in the next episode. The ne <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the next episode. <laughs> yeah, you know. I actually, I do think Beacon could get quite a lot from watching this back and understanding mm -hmm. where they made mistakes and where they weren't like adapting to how the other team was playing, which I think is it's a hard concept to like understand and apply for a lot of people. Havana is a hard map to play, but I think first and third point you need to be focusing on poke because right. poke leads to accidental picks. <laughs> right. Me and my Hanzo know what that means. Oh yeah. Well, they had the widow. I kind of wish yeah. they stuck widow for a little mm -hmm. longer because I think there was a lot of potential in just having like a really strong opener, so Valpo could like walk in. And without those movement characters, I mean, what are they going to do to combat that? Arissa is going to e in all the way across the mm -hmm. map. Like widow wins that being wary of May's icicle shot. So Right. Exactly. And I don't think it was any like one category, like any one like uh like, like support thing. healer. It wasn't yeah, no. it was any one thing no, or one person. So. It was just like this combination of a lot of things that Valpo couldn't adapt to for mm -hmm. now. But I think that's something they could very strongly improve on and over time they'll get better at. Agreed. I think that that's just there. There are a lot of factors that went into it. It wasn't just like one or two things you could really point at, which makes it right. hard to fix. But at the same time, you know, you got to have something to look forward to. And yep. maybe that's, uh, you know, leveling up your game. Right. I mean, yeah, for sure. Well, I think we can wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're giving me in production team. My my friends in the production team are giving me the signal. So thank you for watching. Uh, go Valpo and have a go good night. Go Valpo. Good night, gamers.